I do get really frustrated when people say you can't use Bitcoin because literally, I've, you know, my team and I have spent, and, and it's not just us, we've spent so much time making it, like you can literally spend Bitcoin anywhere Visa is accepted now. Um, and then people like Jack and Michael and from Oshi and like, all these Bitcoiners who are, you know, um, you know, at Texas Slim, I'm looking at a sticker right here. You can buy a cow with Bitcoin, which we're going to have them in our app soon. Um, you really can use Bitcoin as an everyday spending tool at this point. Um, and if, if you want to argue with that, like, where can't you swipe a Visa card? I just showed, you know, I just showed you adding a Visa card that I paid for in Bitcoin and I can go tap to pay this anywhere in the U.S. or internationally. Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Builders and Bitcoin podcast, a podcast about the people who bring Bitcoin to life. I'm your host, Rod, and I go by the handle BitKite on Twitter. I was fortunate to have the Bitcoin company co-founder and CEO, Ben Price, in the Bitcoin TV studio at Bitcoin Park. We packed a lot in less than an hour. We discussed and covered a wide range of topics, including what Ben actually does as CEO, go through real-world use cases, the different types of people who would use a gift card app like TBC, including his mom, the difference between open loop and closed loop credit card systems, the most interesting way people are using their product, how the gift card industry actually works, how they make money, how they operate their lightning infrastructure, their ambitious plan of bringing Bitcoin to the world, and a nice little golden ticket hidden for one lucky European Bitcoiner who would like to attend BTC Azores. I'm excited for y'all to give it a listen, so let's just jump in. Ben, welcome. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well after solving the phone to TV to Apple TV screening problem. I feel like a champion. Yeah, man. Uh, I will say this. Over the last uh, few days, my uh, technical proficiency with... um, USB-C's to Ethernet cables to airplane. I'm like one from zero to hero. Uh, that's for sure. And so, thanks for uh, figuring such this a scam. out. All the dongles, all the dongles they try and sell you on. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it is pretty much. But welcome. Uh, we're not talking about Apple products. We're going to talk <laughs> about um, products or, or founders and uh, creators that bring Bitcoin to life. Um, that's the purpose of this pod. And uh, your company, the Bitcoin company, um, is pretty exciting. I mean, you, we walked through a couple of demos, not even demos, like real world examples um, over the past like 30 minutes. So excited to have this conversation, yeah. uh, impromptu conversation, but um, and your guest number two. So thanks for. Uh, All right, number doing two. This. Yeah, man. We had Wiz on earlier. First loser. And uh, there you go. We got a lot of them. Um, Wiz was on. We were talking about the mempool, at, which is his mempool, and then other uh, details around uh, mempool, which is exciting. And we're going to drop that uh, here shortly. Um, but maybe as I asked Wiz, um, the first question, which is always a difficult question even uh, for myself to answer as well, which is, when somebody comes up to you and asks you, what do you do? How do you answer? <laughs> um, lately, I've, I've been kind of uh, feeling sorry for myself. So I kind of moan <laughs> and groan. And I talk about how I do legal and compliance and regulatory work all day. Um, honestly, my job is to keep um, keep all the BS away from our, our technical team. Uh, we're a very small team. It's myself, Ben Carman, Connor, Atlas, a few graphic designers. But uh, for the most part, I try and let the coders code. Uh, I think as Wiz said, like let them convert their caffeine to, to code. And um, I try and keep all the, all the madness off their plate. That includes fundraising, talking with lawyers, compliance officers, um, <laughs> mostly lawyers and compliance officer these days, but also a little bit of like product strategy and partnerships, you know, reaching out to Bitcoin 2023 mm-hmm. like this or re- hanging out with Rod and you guys at, uh, at you know, the, the Nashville Bitcoin meetup and I don't know, trying to trying to just tell people about what we're doing. But for the most part, letting Ben Carman be Ben Carman. Yeah. So, so what you guys are doing, like, can you distill that in maybe one to two sentences? Like what's the Bitcoin company doing today? And in one and two sentences, what's the Bitcoin company plan to do in the future? Yeah, so our kind of mantra is is Bitcoin for everyone. Uh, and, and there's different ways to go about that. 
uh, we believe everyone in the world, we want to help everyone in the world own, understand, and use Bitcoin. Um, there are some people going about that with mempool explorers, others with wallets. What we think is to get um, the best the best method that we can use is, is to get kind of mainstream users to adopt it more. Um, there's this kind of challenging chicken and egg problem with merchant acceptance and consumer adoption. And um, we're, we're trying to do a little bit of both, but for the most part, we're pushing the consumer side and then trying to incentivize merchants to come on board to our, our platform. But um, in short, today we have a lo- rewards and loyalty platform yep. that lets you spend Bitcoin or, you know, very soon any currency you want. Um, but we, we provide you rewards in the form of Bitcoin as opposed to airline miles or points or, you know, whatever, insert fiat money here. Um, so shop through us. Uh, whether you're doing phone top-ups, uh, you're buying Visa cards that work all over the world, you're buying Airbnb cards, it doesn't matter. We're going to give you Bitcoin back. Um, and so, like that's where we are today. And then tomorrow we want to be a more full-stack solution. So uh, you can come to us, you can have a bank account, you can have a Bitcoin exchange and your rewards all in one place. And the thesis there is that if we give someone like my mom a viable alternative some, to someone like a Bank of America or a Chase, and she can do all of her banking, all of her Bitcoin, and get rewards in one place. Well, she actually has a reasonable way to, you know, pull away from the traditional financial system mm-hmm. and move towards a Bitcoin standard. And we think that's the first step. Um, so yeah, let's talk about today, and let's do it freaking live. Why not? Yeah. I mean, we've we spent a little bit uh, figuring out um, how to get this on the airplay. So yeah. So you guys are at, at a mobile-based uh, company. So yeah. you have an app in the App Store. iOS and Android. Okay, yeah. cool. You can go to the bitcoincompany.com slash download or just our website. Pretty easy. Okay, cool, cool. And then why don't we sign into your account to save that? Right. By the way, it probably takes like l- less than a minute to set up an account. Yeah, so that's important to know. We only ask for email and password on account. Yep. Uh, you can sign up with a ref code. I suggest OpenSats or Donate if you want your funds to go towards open source development. But we will just use my password right now, which is deep behind closed doors. And so while you're doing this, um, it's more akin, what, what you're doing here is basically being the shopping portal for people to use your site to then go and buy a card. And maybe you can def, like explain the open loop versus closed loop, but in this example or in an example, going to Airbnb, because I want to go have an Airbnb, you know, next month in Austin for BitBlock Boom. I go buy this gift card here on Airbnb. I get sats back. Yep. And then I'm able to then redeem that uh, Airbnb uh, gift card when I'm going to purchase yeah. my uh, stay. So uh, I'll back up there. I, I would say we have a couple really interesting types of users. Some, uh, and, and you know, most of my close friends are people who are either unbanked or voluntarily unbanked. Um, and they are simply live trying to live off their Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, they do not have a bank account yet. They need to rent a place, and mm-hmm. they can come to our app and download, uh, you know, or buy an Airbnb gift card. Or more realistically, what often what the unbanked people are doing is they're buying these open loop Visa cards, where you can actually. So, can spend, you explain open loop real quick? Yeah. So this is sorry. This is industry terminology. Um, so Airbnb, these gift cards, you know, Airbnb, uh, Chipotle, Barnes and Noble, Uber. These are what we call closed loop gift cards. And what that means is you can only spend them at the merchant. Uh, like, you know, if I buy an Uber gift card, I cannot go spend it at Airbnb. Um, if I buy a Barnes and Noble gift card, it does not work at Borders. So it's closed loop. It means you can only spend it at a closed loop of merchants. Um, whereas open loop, something like this Visa card, um, would work anywhere Visa is accepted and is called open loop. And the the differentiation is really it's Visa, MasterCard, Amex prepaid gift cards versus uh, Airbnb gift cards. Yep. But they're regulated slightly differently. Um, and so that's why we kind of clarify it. And you don't have to have a – you could be an anonymous account and still – yeah, so uh, I don't believe I have a name associated with mine yet. I might have done it for testing. Yeah, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. Unfortunately, I'm doxing my email here. That sucks. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can sign up. Uh, you know, I like Proton Mail, but there's plenty of uh, email companies and uh, email password. Just like anyone else, the the just make sure you have you know your your email access to the email uh, if you need to reset your so password. That's really okay. So that's great. So you're earning rewards by buying these gift cards. And then you can actually make a withdrawal. So you can once you hit a certain withdrawal or balance, 
you're able to then yeah. withdraw it to whatever wallet, whether it's over Lightning or on-chain? Yeah, so do as I say, not as I do. I know I'm not going to rug myself, so I have a ton of rewards on here. But you, the second you spend, if you pay with Lightning, you can, I think it's once you spend 21 bucks, we immediately turn on all withdrawals. We do have a limit of 50K uh, minimum for on-chain, but you can 50K do- 50K sats? Yeah, for so that's to prevent, yep. you know, help you and, and to prevent us from spamming the network. But, yep. you know, I can withdraw, so- I mean, I can show you a withdrawal here if you'd like. Um, let's see. Let's use Wallet of Satoshi. We'll add, let's say, how many sats? Do so we this have? is 25. a Bitcoin wallet, Wallet of Satoshi. There's You could withdraw to any number of wallets, whether that's Moon or Blue yeah. Wallet or any of these. You just select a Wallet of Satoshi. Paste it in. Hopefully it works. Paste it in a Lightning address. I'm going to confirm that withdrawal. We'll see if I have to yell at Ben Carman. We're doing it live. Yeah, it's dangerous. I usually, uh, I haven't used Wallet of Satoshi much. I usually am using Blue Wallet. There we there go. There you go. So now if you scroll, like slide over to Wallet of Satoshi. So you can see my 25 sat withdrawal. You could literally do one sat, which is a fraction of a cent. Freaking cool. Yeah. And then with that Wallet. That should be a green. Boom. boom. So I just, cool. you know, did a lightning withdrawal. I could have theoretically, God, there's another docs on my email. Um, I could have theoretically withdrawn my entire balance. Um, there's nothing preventing us so from doing So let me slow that. you down. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you got the lightning and on-chain uh, balance up there. Or, sorry, the ability to withdraw to your lightning uh, address yep. or your on-chain address. You obviously have this available balance. And then can you maybe explain a little bit about the pending balance? There? Sure. Yeah. So when you pay with lightning, um, and one of the beautiful things about it is the funds are instantly settled. There's no such thing as fraud or chargeback risk. I have the money, which is why I feel comfortable releasing a digital gift card or a Visa card to you that you could use right away. However, if you paid with an ACH or you paid with your Visa card, um, you can typically dispute those transactions uh, for around 60 days. Yep. Um, and so what you could go do, and this is why there's a lot of fraud with gift card companies or even Bitcoin exchanges that allow for credit card purchases or debit card is I could come in, I could say, you know what, I want to Or even make... ACH. I mean, you could say your account was hacked or whatever. Yeah, and, ACH has a 60 day, yeah. I think it's 30 day plus this statement, but essentially 60 days. So, yeah. you know, you come in, you purchase this gift card and I give you the 1-800 pet supplies digital card, you go use it and then- And you get the weeks... sats back by the way too. <laughs> and you withdraw, back. yeah. And then two weeks later you call up your bank and said, you know what, that wasn't me. Um, and so what we do is, um, you know, your balance that is pending, that is because I have access to a feature that is in beta right now where you can purchase um, gift cards with credit cards. However, most of our users today can only buy with Lightning. Uh, we're rolling that out in the next couple of weeks. And if you pay with Lightning, your your funds are always available. But if you pay with a credit card where you could dispute it up to 60 days, Got it. We, ju right. we just lock your rewards up for 60 days. That's, you that's can, fair. <laughs> honestly, we're, we're still going to get hit with, with scammers, but at the very least, we don't, we're not going to give them their rewards, I guess. <laughs> so let's go back to the home screen, if you don't mind. Yeah. So that's great. So I'm I'm using this. I There's a withdrawal. I actually have to then first probably deposit Bitcoin in order to use. No, we are not a custodian. Um, that's we right. We only accept Bitcoin for the in payment form. Um, long term, we will have the ability to hold Bitcoin or dollars on your behalf. But right now, you can only use it as a payment method. You pay us for it. And then we provide you uh, rewards points that are redeemable for Bitcoin. So I have, <laughs> I have nine hundred eighty-seven thousand nine hundred ninety-seven points. Which, uh, from a legal perspective, when you press withdraw, we convert them to Bitcoin and send them to your account, whatever Lightning invoice or on-chain. But I could send this whole balance, which is about two hundred thirty dollars, to any on-chain address right now. How long have you guys been live? Uh, we did a very quiet rollout in February, and then a public launch in March. Okay. But I've been using it ever since. I've bought. What's the most interesting cars. thing that you know that you've noticed how people are using your product? Oh, easy. It's these uh, international Visa cards. Uh huh. So um, we've been talking a lot about like Airbnb cards, Uber cards, but the the real way to like help people live off their Bitcoin. So we we kind of got away from our user types. There's people living off their Bitcoin. There are coupon clippers, kind of like stay-at-home moms and dads who are just trying to save, uh, you know, whether it's through Rakuten or Ebates or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, they just want to save money. And uh, those are big users of our application. And then you have the unbanked who are literally using... Uh, sorry. Can you define unbanked real quick as yeah, well? So unbanked are people around the world who um, don't have access to banking services. Sometimes that is due to geographical limitations. Either they're not close enough to a bank 
or they're under geographic sanctions um, where, you know, maybe you're in Ukraine right now and you can't have a bank account or, um, you know, you're in Russia or, for instance, North Korea. Um, uh, And so all these people, you kind of take it for granted. You have a Visa card, which is attached to your bank account, et cetera, and you can go to the store and use it. A lot of people don't have access to that. And so a lot, again, is is geographic-based. Many are ID-based. And some just, I think 30% of the unbanked in the U.S. said it was because they just don't have enough money to set up a bank account, um, afford the minimums and things like that. So it really, like, affects the poor, um, those in, in countries without, you know, identification documents or those hit with sanctions. And so basically means you don't have access to the global financial ecosystem as it lives today, yeah. but that's what Bitcoin fixes. Yeah. Um, and so what we enable, you know, a lot of people to do and what we've seen, which we weren't expecting is today, if you have a family member who's unbanked, let's say in India, uh, and you need to send them money, you typically go to Western Union or TransferWise, and you pay 18%, you stand in line, they go stand in line, pay probably fees on the other end. But now we have users who they'll, their family member in India will download our app. Yeah. They'll get access to an international visa but card. But this would be more the underbanked. Though, underbanked. Right? Yeah, no, okay. I mean, not necessarily. Someone with a phone and a, and a, and a Wi-Fi connection. Sure, sure. But like the what they're participating in the Western unions of the world and so on. No, so Western Union is, I wouldn't, I mean, maybe that's on, maybe that's considered underbanked, but you typically just need an ID. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the line between unbanked yeah, yeah, and sure. underbanked. Um, but uh, but I guess my point there is yeah. there's so many people that are don't have the privilege to be accessing the credit markets, all these different financial products that a lot of us, especially in the States, have access to. And or they're things- paying too much. Or they're sorry. Or they're just paying too much or getting charged fees. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then things like this or products like this allow them to uh, onboard or e- easily get into a gift card or something. Well, and this then- is functioning as a checking, like a, essentially a checking account for someone without a bank. Because my family member across overseas who doesn't have a bank will spin up a Visa card. And then they send the invoice to me and I pay it and they immediately have a $1,000 Visa card that can be used anywhere. And so now, even though they don't have a bank account, they do have a Visa card, which it yep. looks just like everyone else. And so we've started to see, um, we've started to see like this being used as an alternative um, you know, method for remittances, which is really, really cool. Um, and our, that, our international user base is much bigger than we expected. So that's another question I have. Okay, so you do the soft rollout, then you do more public rollout. and now. Arguably, the Bitcoin company is a global company from day one. Yeah. I mean, we have users literally all over the world right now, and it's really it's really awesome. So uh, right now we see um, a U.S. Visa card. However, uh, I mean, I could I could show myself, you know, I could access this from— Yeah, let's not do that right okay. now, uh, if you don't <laughs> mind. Um, I, the one question I have for you is, so you have all these— mer- Can you go to the merchants uh, or brands, I think it is, yeah. or shops, sorry? But just for clarity, anyone yeah. outside the U.S., we can provide international visa cards to. So, yeah, yeah. all brands. Um, how did you get all these brands? So, uh, not that difficult. It's just like, it's. I guess it's kind of like uh, the unknown knowns of the financial world. I, I used to work at Visa, and so I kind of knew how these stored you know, gift card providers work. Um, the gift card marketplace is aggregated at the top with maybe four big behemoths. It's typically SVS, Blackhawk, Incom, Fiserv, uh, and then there's a couple hmm. companies that aggregate other. Um, but essentially, with a couple relationships, you can get access to a portfolio like this. Um, and we're not the only people doing it. There's some great, some other companies in the space. And um, you know, we were we were a little bit later to the game, so we try to offer better rewards, but. Yeah, we didn't we didn't specifically team up with all these companies. Now, what we have done is we do offer third party. Um, you know, we we do sell gift cards and event tickets, and so these are all of our friends running amazing Bitcoin companies and conferences, and we are not getting access to those through these aggregators. Yeah, so you're um, going out with your relationships, going hand to hand, onboarding Bitcoin focused merchants yeah. to the Bitcoin company. Yeah. And here's like an example of a reward. So yeah, we sell Blockstream gift cards. We sell tickets to Bitcoin 2023. We've That's got, cool. you know, crypto cloaks. We're adding a few others. Um, and then you negotiate the sats back yeah. with them. And so, so the company, you know, Bitcoin Mag is essentially saying, buy a subscription to our magazine. We're going to give you 21% back in Bitcoin if you do it. And so they get access to our, you know, our user base of, you know, thousands of Bitcoiners. Um, you know, who get to see like a little bit of advertising here. But at the end of the day, uh, it's just like goodwill towards your users. And 
So while the aggregators at the top handle all these big popular brands, kind of, you know, the AutoZones, the Airbnbs, the yep. Chipotles of the world, um, we go handle the longer tail and we we go find um, brands that our users want and we integrate with them. And so we essentially are, you know, kind of helping support the longer tail. How does a merchant then, like, let's say, you know, we're here in, at Bitcoin Park in Nashville and, you know, down the street, a merchant wants to onboard with the Bitcoin company. Mm-hmm. How would they do that? And uh, how would they do that? And then how long does it take? Um, so we have this like portal we set up where it's the bitcoincompany.com slash partner. Um, okay. Essentially you reach out to someone on our team. But, you know, it, the way we ha- we onboard our long tail merchants, we have a Shopify integration, a WooCommerce integration. And so anyone with a Shopify or WooCommerce account, we can kind of plug into the back end. You give us an API key and we sell your gift cards. But for the kind of like mom and pop shops who are just selling, you know, bread out of their bakery and they want to yeah. accept Bitcoin, um, we essentially, you know, we could sell vouchers. So, um, you know, typically we we have like an, a CSV file and, you know, this is what we did with like Adam's shoes, for instance. You know, they gave us a list of 100, $100 gift cards and we just go down the list and sell them. And whenever yep. the first person buys one, we release the code and they, you know, the, the user takes that code to their website and applies it as a gift card or a payment method and it just works. So there's a little bit of cor- like... Um, collaboration with the provider, but typically it's yeah, it's a you need a Bitcoin uh, entrepreneurial Bitcoiner at one of these places that wants to invest a little bit of time just with you. I mean, I we we have a merch store for TBC, and I we use Shopify, and you can create it's a, a web GUI, and you click create gift card, and I created like fifty five dollar gift cards, and then I just shared that with us, and that's mm-hmm. we put it in the app. So it's uh if you want to do it the like the crazy technical way with an API integration, we can do that. Um, but most merchants just say, you know what, let's start slow. I'll s I wanna I'll give you 10, 10 conference tickets to sell. And when yep. you get through those, you know, tickets, calls back up, we'll give you 10 more. Um and so that's what we've done with you that's know, Bitcoin awesome. 23 and Bitcoin Amsterdam, Bit Baltic Honey Badger, things like that. So if we can go back to the the merchants, which is really interesting to me. It's yeah. like, okay, Spotify to Sony PlayStation to like I'll ask the question, which is like, how the heck do you guys make money? Um, okay, so we make money because, because like these rewards are pretty insane. I yeah, mean, to to get, I mean, on a topical level, we source uh, these gift cards at a discount. So while we sell them for a hundred dollars, we only pay uh, ninety five dollars for them. For okay. instance, like Ace Hardware, it looks like we get about a five percent discount. Um, different brands are less. Like Amazon, we get a terrible discount on, or bet you know. Uh, build a bear of workshop, they give a bigger discount. So maybe we're paying, you know, $89 for every $100 you buy. And the reason the reason that is, is the, the economics of the gift card marketplace. There's a few things that um, that help. It's essentially a $0 loan for the company. So when you buy a build a bear, <laughs> when you buy a Burger King gift card for 100 bucks, they are logging that as um, basically, uh, they're, they're logging it as revenue. So they get the money today and they sell goods tomorrow. So instead, so mm. let's say they sell a million dollars of gift cards. That's a million dollars they have in their bank account that they haven't sold burgers for. And otherwise, the only way to get your hands on a million dollars is to go to the bank and pay 5%. And so clearly, Burger King would rather give you a 4% discount. Yeah, yeah. Additionally, um, there's breakage. So you give your friend, a, I mean, how many of you have a, you know, a stupid gift card in your drawer at home Ugh. that you haven't used? The, that company's still it's sitting on that money. Freaking existence. And so some people never use that. That's called breakage. And so they make a little money off of that. Um, oftentimes that gets swept back to the state after, you know, 36 months, but at the end of the day, it's a free wait, wait, loan. It's swept back to the state. What does that mean? Oh God, there's these weird, uh, there's, I think, I don't know how it started and I forget what it's called, but it's essentially like the state is, says if CVS, if you sell, if you sell someone a gift card and they haven't claimed it in five years, you don't just get the money. It's technically that person's money, but then they have to go through some like big legacy project or you have to, you have to go find like, um, the right agency, the consumer protection agency, and like apply for your five dollars in value. It's it's really really dumb. Um, but a lot of times we'll yeah, table that. Yeah, then. we'll yeah. table that. You call it a zero interest loan. Okay, um, that, that's fascinating to me. And so like you guys are basically going up. It seems, and can be honest here. It's okay, and we'll use Burger King because I love a wa- good Whopper. Burger King. There Let's say, go. but you guys are going to buy. I don't know, uh, ten thousand or a hundred thousand dollars worth of these gift cards. Up front at a discount? No. Uh, no? Some people okay. do that. Uh, we we have partnered with some of the the biggest like kind of leaders in the processing and gift card industry. So we do pre-fund in an account. 
Um, but we we buy them programmatically. So right now, you know, I could sell you a hundred dollar Burger King gift card, or you could do a custom amount one. And so what that means is I ping their API, and at the time of purchase. Uh, I'll say I want a five dollar eighty five cent. Because you know card. this is after taxes here in Nashville is the price of one Whopper. Yeah. So example. a lot of times people will they'll log on to I mean like Uber and they'll say uh, I want to uh, Uber to the airport or something and Uber's a bad example but like maybe it's Crate and Barrel or and Airbnb. You yeah. know that checkout yeah. is yeah. like so that's 1, what 000. I just did. Yeah, yeah. The Airbnb card is a great example. You know it's going to be nine hundred dollars for your stay nine hundred dollars and forty eight cents for your stay. Um, so you want that exact amount in gift cards. So you're not overusing or underusing, um, which is the last economic benefit of gift cards, I'll say. Um, but so you, you go into our app, you add a custom amount. And what we have is we have an account with a million dollars sitting at one of our providers and it's pre-funded. And the second you buy that 948 cent ah, card, okay. they deduct our Got dollar it. balance and they, they deliver us the gift card. And then what we typically do is we take the money that you pay us. We, we make a little bit of, so an Airbnb or Burger King, we get 4.8%. So what we're doing when you pay in Bitcoin is we sell about $95 of that hundred bucks. We send that back to the gift card company to top up our account. We give you 4.8% and then we keep 0.2%. Yeah, I guess maybe, uh, how do you get, the, you have to have a certain minimum dollar balance with these gift, the, the, one of these four gift card companies in order to. Honestly, you just need to kind of. <sighs> Um, there's a, there's, I mean, a, a big contract engagement process. You, there's sometimes there's design review, there's brand approvals, for instance, mm -hmm. that's why we don't have Apple right now. Um, but yeah, you have to be able to kind of like walk into a, you know, suited up boardroom and, and pitch your idea, especially if you're in the Bitcoin space, but there's a lot of other companies raises out there. Um, there's, there's just, you know, there's. It's, it's the regulatory moat of the financial system that so, you have to get past. So this is fascinating. So. Uh, there's other companies like Fold, BitRefill, Lolly. It seems like Lolly is going like direct to the retail relationships. And then there's maybe Fold and maybe BitRefill are going to these marketplaces. So the, the way this works is typically no one has, it's all about payment volume. Um, no one has the uh, ability to go directly to uh, let's say Apple from day one and say, you know what, Apple, like we're selling your gift cards. We're selling $20 a month. And like, we want a direct deal with you. They're just gonna laugh you out of the room. You have to be doing millions and millions of dollars. So these aggregators mm -hmm. are the only ones who have accumulated enough volume via customers like me to then go direct to these, to these brands. Um, so typically that's how it works. But if we became a, you know, a behemoth, a monstrosity, and we're selling $20 million of Amazon cards next yeah, month. Yeah, or, or a better example would maybe be like, for some reason, your audience is a bunch of, you know, young mom or ma or family oriented folks that are buying a baby gap. Yep. Right. And then you're doing like of your hundred million in sales, 80 million is in baby gap. There you go. And then baby gap is like, or you're going to say, Hey, we're driving some significant yeah. volume to you guys. Let's do a direct deal. So yeah. So at that point, the what would happen here? So baby gap at ten point two percent. Let's say let's say we're getting ten point five. So you're keeping. And, 10, sorry, real quick clarification. This is ten point two percent back in, in Sats. Yep. Back into your balance, yep. and you're able to hold on. So what what's probably happening here is the aggregator that I'm using is getting something like twelve percent back from baby gap. Mm -hmm. They're passing on maybe 11% to us, and we're passing on 10.2 to our user. And this one's a, a, a poor-ish example because, th and we'll get into it in a little bit, but you've spiked your rewards on your referrals, so you've yeah. juiced up Benefits your- Benefits of being a CEO. There you go. Yeah. Honestly, I just refer a ton of people. Yeah. <laughs> and kudos to you. The uh, But like the, the noob- um, sats back maybe on that for like baby gap would be uh, if I, I don't know. let's go to like ace hardware for example um yep. ace hardware i think like you could if you had your app out i think i'm at maxed out rate of 4.8 percent yeah but i think our standard user makes about 2.4 okay um so you start out at a lower rate and as you refer new users we bring we increase your rewards percentage all the way up until we make absolutely no money off you or I think, I think again, I think we get 5% off Ace Hardware. So you're still got so, that 0.2% just yeah, in case. Because yeah. the, that's our exchange fee. Yeah. Uh, we pay at least, at least 2.2, let alone all the fraud stuff. So to convert your Bitcoin to dollars, which I have to go replenish my account at the, the gift card provider, I'm paying, a, a, you know, money to do that as well as wire fees, ACH fees. And, um, so, okay. So the more people like a, you invite, the better your rewards are. You have and like then, an account with like a prime trust or a Coinbase or somebody like that that's doing the... Yeah, we've actually uh, shout out to OKCoin. Okay um, that was one of our, that was the first person we integrated. Now we have a lot of liquidity providers, but they were uh -huh. the first one 
who gave us access to um, an API lightning integration where we can. Oh, cool. So you pay us your sats to our, directly to our node that's, that's hosted by TBC. Um, and then we can send those sats immediately to OKCoin with our integration and hedge our bet immediately sell for dollars. Because I don't really want the price volatility risk. I have to go pay, f you know, $95 for that gift yeah, card. Yeah. So I have to sell or else if Bitcoin tanks, then I just, my business just ended. Trust me, now operating uh, several businesses on a Bitcoin standard, uh, uh, I feel that. There's not many options. I think Kraken just came out with one. There's no API yet. I think um, Nidig, I was just talking to a couple guys here at Bitcoin Park, and they are working on, they seem to be focusing on Lightning API stuff. But the only one we've been able to use like pretty pretty well so far has been uh, OKCoin. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you all for helping us prove concept here. So you mentioned the Lightning node. Can I ask like how that's, uh, how you guys operate that? And yeah. So this is going to be a good shill for one of our future companies we're going to have on here. But uh, so we... Right now, we're we like kind of totally focused on product development. There's a lot more stuff coming. Um, eventually, we will be very much like a larger Bitcoin company that needs to handle our infrastructure like you know extremely well, have resiliency, redundancy. Mm -hmm. But we tried that. Um, we had like a couple infrastructure guys come in and build us like this you know sweet Dockerized setup and this and that. And then uh, it just got kind of like unmaintainable when really all we need is uptime and inbound liquidity. Yeah. And so we ended up switching to Voltage and for the short term, or I don't know how long, maybe forever. It depends how fast they build out their features that we need. Um, so we switched over to Voltage a couple months ago, haven't had an issue. And so, yeah, shout out to Graham, you know, Paul, the team at Paul, yeah. the team at Voltage, everyone. Uh, they, I think the entire, yeah. well, not the entire team, but there was a number of folks uh, from that team that was here this past week uh, for the meetup, the workshop, and yeah. the uh, happy hour. So. so once we had like two or three issues with our setup, we were just like, screw it. We'll worry about this in six months. Until then, you know, Voltage meme, just use Voltage. And so that's what we're doing now. Um, and it's, it's you know, worked flawlessly, honestly. And, um, you know, eventually I think we'll, we'll probably need to layer in, you know, some advanced, you know, lightning stuff. But... Uh, as a as a merchant accepting Bitcoin, it's perfect tool right now. So can just like plebs and noobs connect to you guys as uh all sorts of people. Yeah. We had uh the guys over at Zebedee just opened a nice channel. Oh, that cool. was cool. Um yeah, a bunch of people, a bunch of friends, family. I mean Carman always you know opens big channels, but you know, there's naturally as a as a node that is accepting funds, there's, you know, this is the incentive layer of the Lightning Network where, you know, you're incentivized to open channels towards these kind of liquidity sucking nodes because you can typically charge higher fees. Now, what we've tried to do to help our users is a lot of our users pay with Strike. A lot of our users pay with custodial wallets. Mm -hmm. um, and so for those, you know, we have a direct, we have a bunch of direct channels with Strike or like we're working on getting a bunch of direct channels with Cash App right now. So you're not actually going to be paying any extra fees. But if you're just routing from your own personal node through Zeus or something, um, you'll probably go through Ben the Carman who will take a sat or two from you. And yeah, that's kind of how it works. So when we talk about like how you guys make money, like this, I mean, this seems like a who's going to build the best mousetrap and like also build the best, you know, be the best marketer. And where I get a little bit fearful is like, okay, it's a race to the bottom in terms of like the incentives and, and to get to get people onboarded and then make it as sticky as possible. Yeah. I am curious because when you build like an amazing um, uh, customer base, are there any other revenue opportunities like being an LSP or maybe you can explain, uh, you know, being a lightning service provider um, or are there any other opportunities that you see? Oh, yeah. Um, so our end game at the Bitcoin company is to bring Bitcoin to the world. And that doesn't just mean, you know, shop, you know, buying gift cards or buying Visa cards. It means really bringing them Bitcoin. So it means they need to be able to buy, sell, hold Bitcoin, send Bitcoin, you know, withdraw it to their own, you know, personal wallet, um, get a loan one day, maybe load up a Visa card with it. So I, I get a lot of crap for this, but the Bitcoin company really wants to be like kind of the, the one-stop financial app of the future. And today that means probably some combination of fiat services, like, you know, a checking account and savings account, mm -hmm. in addition to Bitcoin services, like a Lightning wallet, the ability to convert part of your paycheck to Bitcoin or round up your purchases from your Visa card and save in Bitcoin. We think that's like the transitionary period. 
and eventually it will move towards a Bitcoin standard where everyone is actually using a Lightning wallet. Everyone's getting paid in Bitcoin. All merchants are accepting it. At that point, you just get to cut the fiat stuff out of your app. Um, and so the progression of that is also kind of what we're building. We started with rewards and loyalty because we're trying to get free Bitcoin, Bitcoin rewards into the hands of as many people uh, in the world as possible. And it's really hard for me to convince my mom to to give me her hard-earned fiat and I'll, and I'll trade her this, you know, magic digital token that is going to like get her out of poverty, right? That's kind of the pitch that we're all saying um, in a, in a you know, very uh, novice sense. And it's much easier for me to say, you know what, you're already going to shop at Macy's with your Visa card, mom. How about I give you $10 back in Bitcoin and then you watch it grow to 20 bucks or 30 bucks or 40 bucks. That gets her asking questions. That gets her thinking, you know, why, you know, what is, what is, why did these rewards go up in value when my Amex points went down? Mm -hmm. And so our progression will be going from rewards and loyalty, basically giving you as much free Bitcoin to as much of the world as possible, to then servicing um, users who now want to use us for banking or want to use us for Bitcoin exchange services. And so in the very near future, um, we're going to be offering the ability to set up like a checking account, savings account, do direct deposit, have a Visa card that gives you Bitcoin rewards, but also buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin in our app. Um, so you will not only be able to use Bitcoin, use the traditional fiat system, but also earn rewards all in one place. And so it's kind of— That's ambitious. Yeah, it is. It is. But uh, I mean, that is the goal, and that's um, that's what we're going to do. We've, we've built—you know, we've collapsed down a lot of the— offers in the space in the reward space you know some people do just gift cards other people do just visa cards some people do card linked offers others affiliate deals some do surveys others do exchanges like we really are going to put all that in one application um and uh and and make it as easy to use as possible so right now you don't need to do any kyc to set up an account so this seems like Correct. you're gonna have to like so get the way we think about Max this, KYC or yeah. Something. The way we think about this is uh, the way gift cards, <laughs> loading screen. Uh, the way gift cards are regulated is as long as you purchase the sum below a certain value, as long as you purchase for for open loop gift cards, which I'll remind you is you know Visa style gift cards. You so can Visa, buy, Mastercard, Amex. Yeah, gift cards, FinCEN yeah. has a an exemption uh, which allows you to sell up to a thousand dollars per card as long as the card is not reloadable. And in the United States, that card can't be used internationally, which is why our U.S. users only get the U.S. Visa cards, whereas international users get access to cards that can be used anywhere. But the, the main rules are don't put more than 1000 bucks on it, non-reloadable. And at that point, you do not need to do KYC. Um, or you don't, you don't need to ask for extensive information. Um, the open loop cards uh, or closed loop cards, like an Airbnb gift card, uh, you can sell up to $2,000 per card. Um, the same, you know, same type deal. As long as 2000 not reloadable and up to $10,000 a day, you can kind of ask for no KYC. That being said, many of your users want to sign up for a bank account or they want a Visa card that they can constantly scan a Lightning invoice and reload. Mm -hmm. And for those users, we can offer that product. You just, you just, we just have to do additional KYC. So it's just trade-off to the yeah, individual. So, I think what we'll do is we'll keep like this version of the app as an always no KYC product. Anyone in the world can come in and and, and get access to international visa mm -hmm. cards, access to, you know, Airbnb, Uber, etc. They can withdraw the rewards, do all that with no KYC, um, or you know, like you know, basically no information shared whatsoever. And then we will offer upgradable services. If you want a a bank account with a Visa card that's reloadable and you want your all of your Visa card purchases to round up into Bitcoin that we purchase on your behalf and drop into your wallet, well, that's not only a Bitcoin exchange, that's a bank, that's a Visa card, all these are regulated products. So if you want access to these like really, really kind of advanced features, then you'll probably opt to, you know, uh, share, share some information. But if you don't, you will always be able to access at least, you know, a wide variety of, of products, including phone yeah. top-ups, which are coming soon, Visa cards, remittances that we're working on, tons of stuff. It's just really What's when you touch— What's the coolest thing that, for you using this app? Um, oh, man. For me, it's, it's, it's easy because I I'm, I'm live a weird lifestyle. Uh, it's the international Visa cards when I'm traveling. So let me see if I can find. Um, here's the my card section. I traveled last month. I was in Croatia and stuff. And so, you know, I, I'm always buying these international cards. And then like some of these, I wish I hadn't deleted it from my Apple Pay. But like some of these, I've been using. I've purchased stuff in Norway and then the U.S. and then the U.K. and then Croatia and like use like five different currencies on the same card. Cool. It just works. Um, 
really the best thing for me is hearing stories about users, but uh, like users that have, have gotten access to, you know, you know, money when they otherwise would have been charged 20% from Western Union. But um, if you're, if we're, if I'm really nerding out, one of the coolest things is like, I think we kind of like came up with like a new way to DCA, which is like, if you do referrals, like I'm the CEO. So, you know, unfortunately I'm always shilling my product, but like we have users, like when, when a new user signs up and spends 21 bucks, I get a thousand bucks. And then every purchase after that they ever make, thousand sats. I get the better of 21, 42 or 69 sats. Uh, it's basically you get a percentage of their awards in perpetuity. So all these purchase bonuses, these are just from people I've referred. And so every day I'm just like kind of stacking sets because I've been, you know, telling people about my product. And so anyone gets access to that. But that's kind of the fun thing. And and we just turned on push notifications for at least our first users. Um, and so I'm always like randomly getting notifications. Like you just stacked, you know, 28 sets. And I did, <laughs> I did nothing other than like kind of talk about that the product. That is a DCA Um. Well, this has been very enlightening. Uh, I'm going to go and now I don't have not used the product. I'm going to use the product and I'm going to give you, you some You want to buy something? Let's, well, you know what? Like you had a, on Twitter, I thought on the Bitcoin company, if you hop over there, let's do something big. Do something um, big. Let's go to your uh, Twitter account. Scroll down to like some of the events that are coming up. Okay. That, you know, scroll back up. This one, BTC Azores. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Like that seems like a super dope event. So to explain this event. So this is a, uh, as the tweet shows here, this is a developer-focused yeah, uh, conference, that. aka unconference. And uh, I've been speaking to, I think it's Kevin Loeck. I'm not sure how to say his last name, but some really brilliant technical developers are going to these like awesome islands out off the coast of Portugal. Uh-huh. Kind of remind, and I had no idea where these were. It's called the Azores Islands or Azores Islands. It's like this this uh chain of like nine or so islands off the wow. coast well it's not even off the coast it's like the middle of the atlantic but it's technically portuguese territory and they're all meeting up on i don't know there's probably not this island but it doesn't look like there's much here but they're meeting up on an island out there and talking about bitcoin for a couple of days and um so they're selling t- uh tickets so yeah. they're one of the bitcoin companies that so, you did a d- direct deal with so yeah we on worked, this tab we worked here. with kevin and um the prices are a little strange because they're doing euros and so we put it in dollars amount for for a dumb for the specific like ticket yep and so yeah they came in and we kind of we joined forces and figured out what should we, we should say and the about this item but yep. yeah i mean let's do it i'll buy a hundred dollar ticket um we can give it away to one of your uh your european listeners and so rock and roll uh, what what we just did there is we you know we clicked on the conference we learned about what we're buying so we ha- we sell not only gift cards but we sell conference tickets so Bitblock Booms in there Baltic Honey Badgers in there Bitcoin 2023 but we're gonna buy BTC Azores yep and uh, it, we get 10 percent rewards back so on a hundred dollar purchase we get 424 sets per dollar and real quick that the 42396 is a, a API into OK Coin right now that's calculating the price right now in real time. Um, I think the price is an amalgamation of like multiple exchanges that we have access to. Okay. Um, probably an average, a weighted average of some kind. Um, but essentially, yeah, it could just be you're hitting, you know, OK Coins API or Coinbase's API or whoever. It's just the the market price. Okay. Um, and so, at its current rate, if you spend 102 bucks, you're gonna get 424 sats per dollar. So just under. But then you would be buying the the not only the gift card, but then you're buying the sats from the exchange in order to. Uh, if they wanted to withdraw those sats. Well, it depends. So that's where it gets interesting is um, I'm going to purchase this ticket, right? Yep. So if I pay in Bitcoin, then what's going to happen is I'm going to pay 400 Wait, real quick. Go back to that. Uh, okay, pay with. Uh, so you got, like you said before, you have your fiat rails with Discover Visa Amex. Well, Amex is not available right now just yet. Uh, MasterCard. Then you have your TBC rewards, which is all the sats you've accumulated. So yeah. almost those million sats you're able to use within yeah. the app again, which is great. And then wait, so if you're using those sats that you've earned, you can earn sats on those sats? Yeah, I guess you could. I But you know, I want to stack those sats and withdraw them, but you theoretically could, yeah. Hmm. So now we're using no... Lightning because we're going to go use like Wallet of or yeah. uh, Moon or any other Lightning wallet. So we can walk through the two different things. But if you pay me in, in sats, let's say you buy this $102 Ticket. ticket you're gonna yeah. pay what's really happening is when you you're gonna you know you're gonna Do open it. up your lightning wallet we'll pay with, purchase yeah we'll pay with sats here and then this is a big purchase so we've got we support you know any lightning let's wallet. do breeze shout out roy i don't think i have a 102 dollars on breeze Oof. um i'm gonna use strike because i know i have that but we could have used 
any variety, uh, any variety of these wallets. So we're gonna confirm that purchase with Strike. We come back here, and we just got a BTC Azores ticket. Um, so sick. This is a specific code that they worked out with us that we would show a user whenever they make a purchase. Um, and I can go. So they could redeem the ticket, but what's the card number up there? Is that also the redeemed ticket? So for you know, for someone like uh, Airbnb, this would be the code that you punch into your Airbnb app or your mm -hmm. Uber app, and then you say like load wallet with a gift card, and it would just give you the value. Um, with BTC Azora, as the what, what we set up was this thing where they have a ticketing platform, and we send you to a unique URL. Um, and it's already, it should everything, everything should okay, be preloaded. Okay, so that, that's the discount code. So yeah. if, if, if somebody's watching this uh, pod, you know, in the next yeah. couple of days, so. and then basically whoever is watching it and is uh, uh, very entrepreneurial and it lives in Europe, they can go snag this uh, free ticket. Yeah, so there's a variety of ways Heck for us yeah. to do okay. this. We could have applied this at checkout like a gift card, but what, what we did with BTC Azores was we did a, a weird deep link with a URL that had this appended. And so as you can see, my ticket is free, even though it's 100 bucks. And so I won't, I won't use this so someone else can. But yeah. what just happened there is I sent, um, we'll go back to my history. Um, what happened was I sent 400,000 435,000 sats to the Bitcoin company over the Lightning Network. Uh, what we did is we forwarded on, we kept 42,000 of that for our, for the user 10%. rewards, yep. and we forwarded Ish. the rest to, let's, let's say, OKCoin, okay and we market sold for Bitcoin, which is where that initial price came from. But we immediately hedged out of around 390,000 of those 435,000 sats. So we, we, have, we now have dollars on our exchange account, which I can then send to BTC Azores as yep. payment for yep. this ticket. Um, however, most of our Bitcoin companies, they're great. They like keeping their stuff in Bitcoin. So we probably didn't actually do that. We probably held it in Bitcoin and we'll pay them in Bitcoin. But like... Uh, yeah, like they'll, they'll yeah. say, hey, the 435,510 sats, yep. straight. We'll, I'll keep it in Bitcoin. Yeah, but they could also have said, I want a 50-50 split. It's, I want, yeah. you know, 69-31. Uh, it doesn't matter. We can do that. So if you and want... Carman codes yeah. that on the back end or and something. then but for our for our gift cards like airbnb or uber yes yeah, we have to pay the gift card company in dollars so what we do is we keep you know whatever the five percent rewards we don't we don't sell that we keep that for your user rewards and then we send the rest of it and you know hedge on an exchange so we have dollars now eventually we're gonna have so many people paying with what we didn't talk about is like if you paid with a credit card the opposite happens where we do we have to now go buy bitcoin on an exchange to to fund your rewards. We'll do that V2 when it's live. Yeah. Well, it Run is it live back. for me. It's just not no, live no, 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 for everyone. Yeah. We'll, we'll save but, that for the uh Yeah, it's when, uh, it's when you publicly roll it out, you can come back to Bitcoin Park. Yeah, and it's um I mean, it's it's Dude, really this is uh, I'll be honest with you, man. I mean, uh I'm this is this is cool, man. Good job. Like Thanks. Um I why I'm doing this dang pod is I love tinkering with pro Bitcoin products and services. I'm done with, uh, you know, giving up my personal information to sign up for new services. But with that said, this is a service where up to a thousand dollars worth of gift cards that I want to buy. Oh, you um, can do, you can do $10,000 a day. It's just a thousand dollars per visa card and, you know, up to $2,000 for ACE hardware, for instance, but you can buy multiple. I'm also not rich. Yeah. So I'm like up to maybe like a Come couple, on. 10, 20, 30 Send them out as right. Christmas presents. That's what my mom I, does. Okay. For, yeah, again, not rich <laughs> to be able to do that. But with all that said, um, there's a lot of tinkering. I, I think not me, but somebody out there that's, uh, wants to go do like the SWOT analysis of, uh, rewards across each of these companies would be a really interesting exercise to well, see who. Get... Oh, we made it. I'm the first. Uh, I think I made it over a million sats for the first time. You Look just did, that. man. And you have no pending balance Beautiful. anymore. There you go. Um, this was awesome, man. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you walking us through this uh, because this is one of those products similar to Mempool, similar to you guys, and I hope to uh, interview a number of other people. This is what brings Bitcoin to life for me. I mean, you know, being able to use Bitcoin in day to day and solve problems that may not be, if you're banked, you know, this may be an extra hurdle or a step for you to go get a gift card and apply it to Airbnb and blah, blah. And you're like, eh, I get like 3% back on my credit card, uh, you know, but then there's those Bitcoiners that are like, I want as much Bitcoin as humanly possible. I will take that 
small extra step. And it may not even be an extra step anymore for them because they're getting 5%, 6%, 7% back in SATs. And um, I think there's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see this play out and then, you know, God bless you in terms of like building out that insane stack, you know, let's check back in three months and six months and then 12 months to see where we're at uh, on that end. What are you sending? What are you doing now? Uh, I just wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, while we paid for a conference ticket there, you can also buy a Visa card. Uh, so what I did with here was I just bought a virtual Visa card um, and you can load it up. You're going to give me a Apple Visa? Pay wallet. Can you give it to me? Sure, I'd love to give it to you. Oh, okay. Um, Do you have Apple Pay? But no one's gonna be able to see. I'll give it to you after the fact. Yeah. You can you can steal it from me. We well, could just spend it at Bitcoin Park. So right now we send you to a third party website. Er, uh, working live might not. Oh, here we go. Um, we send you to a third party site. Very soon we're switching all this to be like an in app experience. But I did just want to highlight that you can literally add. You can buy a Visa card and basically in. 20 or so seconds, add it to your Apple Pay, and then you could go scan that anyway. Got it. So I'm going to add the card number, and then let's see, 0323 is the expiration, and 538 security code. And then the second this finishes up, I could go tap to pay at a coffee shop with this card, which is what I've been doing. That's how I've been living off Bitcoin in Europe and things. I basically have completely stopped using my traditional bank um, and, and only use these these kind of Visa cards that get added to Apple Pay. And so and that's one piece. This is how international users are often using our product because right yeah. now a lot of the gift cards are U.S. only. Um, but man, I, I, to, to echo your point, thank you. Um, I do get really frustrated when people say you can't use Bitcoin because literally, I've, you know, my team and I have spent, and, and it's not just us. Um, so many people. I mean, we've spent so much time making it. Like you can literally spend Bitcoin anywhere Visa is accepted now. Um, and then people like... Jack and Michael from Oshi and like yep, all these Jack Bitcoiners Moore, who are, Michael. you know, um, you know, at Texas Slim, I'm looking at a sticker right here. Mm -hmm. You can buy a cow with Bitcoin, which we're going to have them in our app soon. Um, you really can use Bitcoin as an everyday spending tool at this point. Um, and if, if you want to argue with that, like, where can't you swipe a Visa card? I just showed, you know, I just showed you adding a Visa card that I paid for in Bitcoin and I can go tap to pay this anywhere in the U.S. or internationally. Um, so like, I don't, I don't know what the, you know, I guess I think that's a great place to just call it like, uh, honestly, and I hope everyone comes, makes a pilgrimage to Nashville. Second Wednesday of every month, we host a Nashville Bitcoin meetup at Bitcoin park. The only currency that is accepted at Bitcoin park is Bitcoin. So you can use this yeah. app. You can use any lightning wallet. You can use any Bitcoin wallet. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Bitcoin park. We're recording in their studio rod. Mills, Odell, uh, everyone who's been putting this on, the speakers that have shown up, we literally just had Jack Maulers and Wiz and just like um, Michael from Oshi and just so many amazing entrepreneurs and people, like you said, Bitcoin builders. Um, and it's all in this amazing place in Nashville. So uh, I do live in, you know, semi live in Austin, which I think is probably the developer hub of the world. But you guys are really setting something up here for to, to I think bring people in. I don't know what your niche is going to be. Maybe it is just getting all us Austinites to come out here because it's awesome. Um, but, you know, it, it's really incredible and it's not quite so hot, which is nice. Rock and roll, man. Yeah. Well, thanks again, man. This has been a blast. And uh, serious, I look forward to the next conversation, buddy. Cheers. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Here's what's coming up. Uh, but first, I hope you got as much joy in hearing from Ben as I did. The plan is to release episodes on a weekly basis. So if you are enjoying the pod, please like and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app to stay up to date. I've already recorded a fantastic pod, episode three, with David Zell, the founder and co-executive director of the Bitcoin Policy Institute. So be on the lookout there as well. And episodes four and five are also in the queue. I also curate a morning email about Bitcoin at wakeupwithbitcoin.com. You can skim for 30 seconds or dig into it for 30 plus minutes. The choice is yours and it's free. So consider subscribing or passing along to friends who are interested in Bitcoin-focused info each and every morning. Lastly, come visit us in Nashville at Bitcoin Park. To stay up to date with our meetups, workshops, and events, join our meetup page at meetup.com forward slash Bitcoin Park. Until next time.